Hi guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Martin. I'm filming this in my storage unit today. What I do in this uh, channel is I show off four books from random and I end on a key issue. I'm just going to crack into these uh, these comics because uh, there's some real fun ones here. The first one we have is X-Men issue 6 uh, from the 90s run um, with this beautiful Jim Lee uh, cover art. Uh, we have uh, Sabretooth and Psylocke on the cover and... Um, this came out, let's see, uh, what year, uh, I can't remember, I think I was about 12 when this came out. And a cover like this was an instant buy. Uh, you had these guys who were just huge, hulking beasts, uh, and these girls who were just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and for a teenage boy, that was kind of the irresistible uh, antidote. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what else can I say? Um look at it don't read it <laughs> the story uh is kind of uh, now that i read it again uh the story is kind of put by the wayside uh there's a lot of uh a uh, lot of exposition that is not needed um but yeah it is an x-men book and it's a it's a much celebrated series so there we go uh, issue six the next one is silver surfer issue 111 and let's see uh, this was, uh, yeah, by George Perez and uh, a personal favourite artist of mine, Tom Grimberg. Uh, I am a big fan of Tom's art style, uh, the heavy inks, the um, the muted tones, uh, the, the, the way that he uh, just conveys action. Uh, for me, it's just, it cannot be beat. Um, and uh, look, <clears throat> he was, it was an interesting uh, uh it was interesting to see him on Silver Surfer because uh, it's not really where his art style lies. He's more in line with, say, Conan or, say, Captain America uh, or even the Hulk. Uh, but the Silver Surfer with the more sleek tones and, and, the, and the glossy uh, sheen um, gave him a bit of a challenge. And I think he, uh, he stepped up to the plate very well. But there we go, uh, issue uh, 111. And I can see a couple of spine cracks or spine dints or whatever you want to call them. Uh, if you want to get technical, uh, I'm not a huge uh, component for the condition of the book. As long as it doesn't fall apart in my hands, I am w more than willing to read it. Now, uh, this was a series I had hopes for, um, and I read the first issue, and I did not renew uh, for the second issue. It's Marauders. Marauders issue one by uh, Steve Orlando. Um, we have uh, Kitty Pride here, who is the captain of a ship. And uh, the premise is that they're sailing the, the seven seas of Earth looking for mutants. Uh, which, yeah, okay, that kind of makes... Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, but it kind of went nowhere uh, within the first issue. And it was just a lot of uh, personal politics and thought bubbles um, and no, no, no real action. Um, and I was bored by the, by the end of this series. Oh, no, I said the end of this series. I was bored by the end of this issue. So, again, yeah, I did not pick it up. Um, I did pick up a few uh, subsequent issues though because um, whenever there's a 2099 character uh, in a book I will pick it up and they had um, Cerebra of uh, the X-Men uh, 2099 they had her in there uh, but she was kind of unrecognizable um, so I was a little bit disappointed and they really didn't do a lot with her they, they introduced her in a big panel uh, which was fun uh, and then she was just a, a background character and I just thought, well, if, if she's going to be a background character, uh, I'm not going to really bother. Um, I, do, I have the original run of X-Men 2099 somewhere here, and it's always here if I want to, if I want to read it and uh, enjoy it. Um, but yeah, there we go. I'll also add, um, when did um, Bishop um, reduce in size? He used to be this huge guy with these big hulky muscles, and now he's this scrawny little guy. Uh, with an M that kind of looks weird on his face. It's, it's like the artist doesn't know where to exactly position the M, uh, which is frustrating. Um, but yeah, when did that happen? You, you please, please tell me, guys. But the last issue I want to show, uh, the key issue for this video, is Detective Chimp issue one with this beautiful Brian Boland cover. Um, if you're a fan of this channel, I hope you are. You'll hear me going on about Detective Chimp. He's one of my favorite characters. Uh, <clears throat> he is kind of tragic, uh, but he has a, a real dark humor, uh, which I think plays very well. Uh, and he, yeah, he is a detective, so um, you got to give him that. Uh, but yeah, uh, at the end of the day, he is a talking monkey. 
for the talking uh, the t uh, talking chimp. So um, yeah, there it is what it is. Um, but <coughs> excuse me, uh, DC can do a bunch with this character. Uh, I don't know why they don't do a six issue miniseries with Detective Chimp. Uh, I would certainly buy it. Um, I would love to write it, to be honest. <laughs> but um, that will never happen. I don't think, well, I, I hope it would, but I don't think it will ever will. Um, but yeah, there we go. Um, now, uh, before, I, before I end uh, this video, I will say, do you think we'll ever see Detective Chimp uh, in a DC movie? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I'll say. Thank you for sticking with me, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got uh, two more to film, and then I'm done for the day. Um, yeah, thanks again. I'll catch you in the next one.